you hunger no more. Even if they bring you your favorite food, you feel like, eh, too bad, man. I don't have room. That's what we say, am I right? But in the spirit, when you are strong, in other words, when you're full, you actually want more. So every time you feel in the spirit you don't want more, it's not because you have, it's because you don't have. So people who don't have in the spirit don't want the spirit. People who want, who have it, they want more. That's the way it goes. Hallelujah, somebody. Before I engage into my message, I just want to prepare your heart a little bit. You are made of three parts. Your body, your soul, that is the siege of your emotions, and your spirit. Now, the third one I just talked about, your spirit, is your real you. This body is not your real you. This body is just used by God as a vehicle to carry you, your real you. So who do you see in front of you? It is them, but it's not really them. <laughs> your real you is invisible. It's a spirit. That's why when you die, your you that we know will remain in the ground, going back to dust. But your real you never die. It lives for eternity. That's your real you. Now, your real you is a light. That light, it is the way God sees you and the angel sees you and demon sees you. In other words, in the spiritual realm, whatever in that realm is, you are there too. So, human beings are the only ones in the earth that are bilocational. So we exist in two places at the same time. Okay, I'm losing you now. Are you catching me? So you are not entering in the spirit. You, there is nothing about entering the spirit. It doesn't exist. You are already in the spirit, even though you are not saved. You exist already in the spiritual realm, save or unsaved. The only difference, one, the light is lightened, the other one is darker. In French, it's tenebre. What is obscure? What is dark? So your light in the spirit, when you are not born again, is a dark light. Right? So we exist in two places at the same time. So I am here, but I'm also there. That's why the song said that we are sitting in heavenly places. I don't have to go sit there. I'm already there. So my spirit exists as my body exists now. That's why sometimes you will end up finding yourself going to bed happy, waking up sad. Why? Because the same way I'm here with you interacting, I can give a hug to you. My body feels you. You get me? You understand? I can look at you. I can turn. Temperature can be high, will be too hot, can be too cold, and so on. I'm affected by my environment in my physical body. Even though sometimes I don't know it or sometimes I know it. In the same way, you are in the spirit, hanging around the spiritual realm with spiritual activities. Your spirit is affected as well. But sometimes you don't know about it. So, how do we figure out that? Your soul is the bridge between your spirit and your body. So your soul stands like that. Your body is here. Your spirit is here. That is the bridge. Where your soul focus, that's what you become aware of. So if your soul or your mind or your emotions focus on the physical, you become aware of the physical. But if your soul, your center of your emotions, your mind, 
focuses on the spirit, you become aware of the spirit. So you are aware of where you are focused. That's why Paul wrote to the Colossians, he said, remove your eyes from the things beneath. Remove your mind from the thing beneath and behold the thing that are above. In other words, be spiritually aware. The just shall walk by faith. Faith is a spiritual activity manifested in the body. Praise the Lord, somebody. So it becomes important that you learn to feed your spirit. That the light that you are in the spirit will keep shining and brighten. Because when you don't feed it, it becomes weak. Your spirit becomes weak. Your flame becomes weak. Your shining becomes weak. Your influence becomes weak. Your authority becomes weak. Your impact becomes weak. You begin to be an easy victim to the devil to take you down. Hallelujah. And that's why I would like to speak today about building strength in the spirit. That's not going to the gym for muscles, no. I'm talking about your spirit. I want your light in the spirit begin to be brilliant. I want it to be stronger. I want it to be mighty. I want it to be glorious. That's what we want. Praise the Lord. We are still in our context. What next? What is next for your life? What is next for your finances? What is next for your ministry? What is next for your family? What's next? What is the next step that you have or you need to take? We draw our portion of scripture from Genesis chapter 25. We read from 29 to 34, talking about the story of Esau and Jacob. The Bible says within the womb of Rebekah, there was two nations and there were two people. One will be stronger than the other. Talking about Jacob will be stronger than Esau. And one, the oldest, will serve the youngest. In other words, the youngest will have a greater authority over the older. I spoke to you about in this season where we are, we need to be wise. Do not sell your future to buy the present. That's what he did. He, sell, he sold his birthright. His birthright was something he will receive in the future. Just for a cup of stew. Because he wanted satisfaction now. So he signed a contract and he lost his birthright. I spoke to you, be careful who you engage with. Be careful who you sign your contract with. Be careful who you do business with. I was teaching to a group of people and I said, don't sign a contract when you're hungry. Or in the same way, don't go to the grocery store when you are hungry. Because when you go to the superstore when you are hungry, you begin to pick up everything you don't need. When you get to the till, it's $300 and you are given 200 and you need to, you are justifying, no, no, I need this cheese. This is a good cheese. I really need two of those. I need three. It's because you are hungry, so you just pick up things like that. And somebody asked me, okay, how do I sign a contract then when I'm hungry? I gave them the story of a soccer player. His name is Eto. He's from Cameroon. He played in the bush there under the, the moonlight. A recruiter came from France and look at this boy. How oh, he's so skillful. Are you hearing me, somebody? And he took Eto and said, Oh boy, I have a deal for you. Eto said, What? I will pay 100000 every year. Can you imagine taking a boy from the bush and telling him 100000 He feel like, Whoa, glory to God. I've been praying for this. Hallelujah. Come on, sign this thing quickly. Before he knows it, he signed a 10-year contract, get in France. <laughs> he plays soccer, score goals, sweat, work hard. He get 100,000, the other guy get 20 million. He never play anything. What happened? He signed a contract when he was hungry. Because he was not able to evaluate his assets. He wanted to settle the deal now to put an end to anger. 
and he sold his future to buy his presents. How many times do we do that? A young girl, you know, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a manager, I want to be a business person, I'm going to make so much money, I want to succeed. And later did she know at 19 she met this Kunta Kunte. <laughs> be careful you don't sign a contract. She messed up, pregnant. Now no more school. Everything is dropping the water. What happened? She traded her future to buy her presents. The devil is looking around to make deal with people in this earth. And many people are buying into it because we like to be rich quickly. We want to make it to the top quickly. We don't want to pay the price. Give me something great. As long as today I'm okay, tomorrow we'll worry about it. Don't do that. So somebody says, so how do you sign a contract when you're hungry? I say, act like if you're not hungry. It's called attitude. Are you hearing me? You are about to say, you know what? I really don't need it. I'm totally fine. That's attitude. I, I don't want this. Oh, no, no, no. We're going to go to 500,000. Listen, I, I'm happy already. You've got to have an attitude in life. Don't reveal your liability to the one that you're competing with. Enhance your assets. That's the way we lose people in church, lose people to the kingdom of God. All these men and women who are singing in Hollywood there, after they screw up their life, kill themselves, overdose. They were in the church. They were singing here like Bethia and all this team. And somebody picked them and said, whoa, what are you doing in the church? How much are they paying you? I know I'm serving the law for free. Uh, uh, uh. I have a contractor in Hollywood who will set you up. We will send you right away for one million. They say, uh, one million? One million? One million? Don't trade your life for one million. Don't trade your conviction and your values for one million. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh. After they die in bathroom overdose, the devil said, we signed a contract. Now it's time for me to take the real deal. I was after your life. I gave you millions. I gave you fame. I raised you up. Your million couldn't save you. Even those millions was to buy stronger drugs. My God, Rabashi Tekele Bakataya. I'm coming speaking to some wise woman and wise man. Don't be too quick to jump into it. You gotta sit down and calculate. Jesus said, if you wanna build, sit down. Make an assessment. It's not enough to start. You gotta have the strength required to finish it. Thank you, Father. So we are going to talk about building strength. Because many people are too weak in the spirit to carry on the assignment. And that's why she preached to you last Sunday. Or to grow in strength so you can fulfill your assignment. If your assignment seems too big and you want to run away from it, it's because you need to grow strength in the spirit. Hallelujah. We want to grow strength. Listen. The world there is getting stronger. The devil there is having more manipulation and tricks than you've never seen before. The same way technology is uh, inventing new things. The same way science is going up. The same way the devil is becoming sophisticated. And is relentless. And therefore we cannot be lazy. Always want to get it the easy way. We have to learn again to fast. We have learned again to pray. We have to learn again to worship. We have to learn again to serve. We have to learn again to surrender to God fully. The devil is climbing up the level of problems. We need to climb up also our level to bring forth solution to our generation. Thank you, Father. Let's go. Let's do this. Project for me there. Thank you. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6, 10, 11. That's what she shared on the last verse. Finally, my brethren, be what? Where? In the Lord. 
This is not gym strength. This is spiritual strength. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Those words are word of war. Those words are word of conquering. These words are word of achieving. It's not lovey-dovey words. This is not, it's going to be okay. That, that's not that word. This word is strength, power, might. Those are words of military, war, conquering, front line. Be strong, brethren, in the Lord and in the power of his might. We can afford to be weak in this season. You cannot afford to be weak in the spirit in this season. The devil will eat your lunch. We can't. We need to rise. On this prophetic journey, strength is a necessity. It's not an option. We need to become stronger in the spirit. We need to become versed in the wisdom of the spirit. We need to become mature in the understanding of the things of the spirit. We need to become sharper than we have ever been before in our walk with God and in understanding the things of the Holy Ghost. I have a teaching, it's called seeing in the spirit. And sometime in October, I will bring it to you all. Because time we begin to see in the spirit. The people of God are blinded. That's why we are confused. We don't know where we're going. And the devil misleads us left and right because we have not learned to see in the spirit. Seeing in the spirit does not avoid you struggle. Seeing the spirit gives you the thoughts, the intents, and the awareness of what is happening in this world there that is invisible. Everything on this earth is decided upstairs first. I'm talking about in the spirit. Good and bad. If you do not understand the spiritual realm and you cannot influence the world that is invisible, you will always live into surprises and you will live a life of a victim. And that's not your portion. I said that's not your portion. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jacob was strong in the spirit. That boy, he was powerful in the spirit. He sees, he saw in the spirit. He went to bed after running from his brother. His eyes were open in the night vision. Bang! What he saw. God sitting upstairs. The ladder is coming down. Angels are coming down. He woke up from there and said, whoa, I was in the place where God was and I didn't know about it. That's what is happening to the Christians. They have no awareness of the spiritual realm, so they live their life always in a surprising mode. Whoa, this is what God, man. <laughs> Only preachers said, preachers, we have said that Jacob was a bad boy. He was crooked. He stole the birthright. God never said that. When you sign a contract, you sign a contract. In other words, the day the father told Esau, boy, I'm about to go. Go, bring me some stew. I want to eat the goat before I bless you. If Esau was real, Esau should say to his dad, Papa, 20 years ago, I'm so sad to tell you that. 20 years ago, I gave the birthright. It's no longer mine. He didn't say that. Because he did something 20 years ago not knowing it's going to track him down. So it's not Jacob who is stealing, who is stealing a, a birthright. It's his birthright because they signed a contract and by a vow before God, Esau gave it to him. Proof of purchase. Hallelujah. Here is why we need spiritual strength, friends. And this last month, 
I have known this more than ever. Our warfare is not against flesh and blood. It's against principalities and powers in heavenly places. It's not flesh and blood. We need spiritual strength. It's, a, it's necessary for your life so you can overcome in conflicts. Necessary to confront life's conflict and obstacles. Look at the obstacles that are being thrown on you. Everyone here sitting, you are fighting somewhere. You are facing something that is probably too big for you, too strong for you. And if you are not, it's a matter of time. This life, there are the highs and there are the lows. But you need spiritual strength so you can confront the conflicts of life and the obstacle of life. If you are weak, they will swallow you. They will bury you. That's why we need to be stronger in the spirit. Too many conflicts to take care of. And many people give up in the midst of it. It's too much for them, they depress. It's too much for them, they throw the towel. It's too much for them, they run away. It's too much for them, the devil literally brings some of them to kill themselves. Spiritual strength is a necessity because of the battle we are facing, the conflict, the challenges, the curveballs the enemy throwing at us, the attack against our families, against our churches, against our projects, against our businesses, against our children. We need to grow a little stronger in the spirit. That's why we need that. Because as long as there are conflicts and obstacles, as long as there is a devil out there who want to stop you from advancing and progressing and make your life a misery, we need to be strong spiritually. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8, 9. Watch this. This is Paul speaking. These men are being mistreated, abused, persecuted. And he wrote this. We are hard pressed on every side. Have you ever been there? Is there anybody here? You ever been in a place where you've been hard pressed on every side? I mean, it comes from every corner, it comes from every top, it comes from every bottom, it comes on the left, on the right. Day after day, he said, I'm pressed hard on every side. At least if there was few sides, there was one side that can give you relief. But he said, every side. But I'm not crushed. <laughs> this is somebody who's strong in the spirit who's speaking. He carries scars on his body. Hallelujah. But he said, because I'm strong in the spirit, I'm not crushed. Crushing is not your portion. Crush is not yours. Jesus was crushed. You don't need to be crushed. Not this kind of crushed. He will press you so you can release anointing. But this one here, he said, I did not give up. I didn't let God down. I did not curse God. I did not compromise my values. That's what he's saying. I was not crushed. Perplexed, but I'm not despairing. He kept his hope. Regardless how tough the struggle, how tough the conflicts were, you cannot steal my hope. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but refused to be destroyed. That's the language of one man who is strong in the spirit. Are you easily offended? You need to grow spirit strength, spiritual strength. Are you easily giving up? You need to grow spiritual strength. Are you hiding and running away at the first challenge? You need to grow spiritual strength. Are you feeling depressed, running away from everybody? You need to grow spiritual strength. Are you feeling despairing, no hope? You need to grow spiritual strength. This once I had to grow spiritual strength to become stronger. I didn't go to the gym though. I'm talking about spiritual strength. Persecuted but not abandoned. 
Pressed down, but not destroy. Struck down, but not destroy. I want to prophesy upon you. Regardless of the conflict and the challenge you are facing, there is a release, even as I'm speaking this word, of a strength that is coming upon you to strengthen your feeble knees and strengthen your heart, strengthen your mind, strengthen your body. In the name of Jesus, receive that right now. I say receive it right now. Impacted within. That's why we need to be strong because we have an enemy. We still have to conquer some territories, but there's always opposition. Today, I want to give you permission to remove your finger from pointing fingers and face the reality. There is an assignment awaiting you to lift up this, but you got to grow strength so you can lift it up. Don't run away from it. Bring it on, devil. We will grow strength. Throw that ass, oh devil. We will grow strength. Hallelujah. I was listening one day to Papa David Oyedepo, one of those generals in the kingdom of God that I like much. Don't listen to me as often, but whenever I hear him, it's always deep stuff. And he said this word, and I wrote it down. He said, life is not a fair fair, but a warfare. Life's not fair. It's not a fair fair. It's a warfare. That's what life is. It's not a playground. It's a battleground. The kingdom of God is not taken by the wimp. It's taken by those who take it by fire, by force. When the devil push you, you grow strength in the Lord. Recover strength in the Lord. Don't give up. Keep your eyes on him. Feed from him. Hallelujah. Be strong in the Lord for we wrestle. I want at the end of this message, you recover strength. Look at what Proverbs 24, 10 said. This one was one of my verses for many years. But I see it in a different way now. Can we read that together? One, two, three. I didn't say that. Solomon wrote it by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. If you are collapsing, it's because your strength is little. He didn't say because the devil is stronger. In the days of battle, if you are collapsing because your strength is small, Many are collapsing today in battles. They are turning against God. But that's not your portion. You will stand and you will not collapse. You will not turn back. You will move from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Nothing by no means will stop your progression. We can be shaken. We can be moved. But we have to stand. We have to stand. Why do we need spiritual strength? Number two. It's necessary to achieve exploits. To achieve your assignments. Hear me, friends. You will not achieve your assignments if you do not grow spiritually strength. You will give up on the road. How many pastor bail out and give up? How many business owners give up? How many fathers and mothers give up? We have to be strong in the spirit to achieve exploits. For our generation to take note of us, we have to be strong in the spirit. Strong in the spirit does not talk about money or fame or education or your skills. I'm talking about 
we have to feed from the table of God continually that our spirit will shine brighter and brighter, that every dark spot in our spirit will disappear. That when tough come to tough, we don't back down. We can cry, but we keep moving forward. We can cry, but we still see the goodness of God. We don't curse God. We see his goodness. We don't doubt him. We celebrate him. We don't run away from him. We run to him. Thank you, Lord. Daniel eleven thirty two, 32, part B said, but the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Before you do exploit, you have to be strong. Before you be strong, you have to know God. I spoke to you years ago about the prophetic journey of the hiddenness and the manifestation. In the prophetic journey of manifestation, you barely open your mouth to pray and the glory fall. You barely open your mouth, somebody healed. You barely open your mouth, the presence of God shoot through the roof. You don't do much and everything move, bam, 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 bam. It's called manifestation. But there's some season we call that hiddenness. You do everything and you wonder, God, where are you? Job said, where are you, oh God? I look on my left, I do not see you. I look on my right, I don't perceive you. Where are you? And in the perspective of hiddenness, God begins to extend your capacity to grow you in strength. I will repeat that. You don't grow in strength in manifestation. Manifestation is the blessing of God upon his people because he's generous. In hiddenness, God will reveal the true intent and the true condition of your spirit. You will never discover how strong you are and you will never discover what your flame looks like in the spirit until you're confronted with an obstacle. After you've done all that you know what to do, yet the, the obstacle is still there in your face. Then you begin to discover who do you really think God is. It reveals your true nature so you can discover God's true nature. No man can know only God just because everything flows. In hiddenness, God expand your capacity. In hiddenness, God begins to reveal his true nature to you. Not just as a provider, but his true nature that will make you trust him no matter what. Even when he does not do the miracle, you still know that God is good. And people are wondering, how can you say God is good when you are going through this hell? Preventing me to go through hell has nothing to do with his goodness. Are you hearing me, somebody? God is good even when he didn't heal anybody. God is good even when he didn't bless anybody. God is good even when he does no miracle. God is good as who he is. But you will never discover that goodness until you walk in the pathway of destiny. It's called a wilderness where you wonder, God, where are you? I can sense you. I can feel you. I cannot touch you. But where are you, God? But yet, from within, something rise up and say, yet I know you are good. You are still God. I can still trust you. That's where strength is released. Spiritual strength is released. Are you hearing me, somebody? So no matter what you are facing today, don't turn back. You are releasing strength, and you are receiving strength right now as I'm speaking to you. The greatest source of strength in God is his word. His word is the bread of life. His word is like honey. 
when you stand under the word of God, it begins to furnish your spirit. It begins to feed your spirit. It begins to shine your spirit. It begins to polish your spirit. It begins to grow your spirit. It infuses strength to your spirit. And suddenly what used to intimidate you can no longer intimidate you. What happened? I have required and acquired strength in my spirit. Hallelujah, somebody. There is a journey that is set before you. And it requires spiritual strength to run it and to finish it. That's why Paul said, on my journey to finish it, I was persecuted, but I was not abandoned. I was struck down, but I was not destroyed. Because your spirit is indestructible. Thank you, Father. There are still exploits to fulfill. There are still dreams to fulfill. There are still vision to run with and fulfill. There are still great exploits to do. It requires strength. Strength. Everybody have a vision. But do you have what it takes to carry it through? Do we have the spiritual strength it takes to fulfill the vision? Or are we going to sit in the middle of the road looking for something easier? Are we going to sit in the middle of the road hoping God will change his mind and bail us out? No, that's not my portion and that's not yours. Everybody sitting here under the sound of my voice and those watching, God has a path for each individual. God does have a path for each person. My hills don't have the same size as yours. And your valleys may be deeper than my valleys. But yet it's still on the path that God has set for you. And I'm speaking prophetically. God said don't change path. Stay on the path. Don't run in somebody else's lane because it seems so easy there. He is God. And in his sovereignty, he has set the way things are. And he didn't make a mistake. He knows you. And he trusts you. And when you are weak, you can call upon him and feed at his table. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are exploit to do. Our generation still need us. Our children need us to draw the line and to leave a mark. A mark that will remain until Christ comes and beyond. That eternity will mention. Wipe your tears. Put an end to your mourning. Other people may still be crying, but you put an end to your mourning. Wipe your tears. Pick up yourself up from the ground. Open your eyes and lift up your head. There are still mountains to take. God is not finished with you. You cannot finish what you didn't start. Don't give up. Don't relinquish your responsibilities. Strength commands always results. Shall be strong and do exploits. Always. I spoke to you in the beginning of the year. This is not the time to talk too much. It's the time to fulfill and to achieve. Amen. 
What does, what did God entrust it to you? Look at how many things have come to try to rob it away from you. I told you, don't sign a contract when you're hungry. Act like if you are not hungry. In other words, people of God, this is the season where you need to have an attitude. It's amazed me every time you watch a boxing match. One is being cut, is bleeding. I tell you the truth. He's so tired, you know this guy's gonna fall down. But then the gun goes on, bang, save him. There he still go down and he can't wait to step out of the chair. No, 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 no. To go get punched some more. I mean, they are crushing you. You are bleeding. And then your coach is going, are you, are you sure? No, no, I can't wait. I can't wait to go. If I'm going to die, let me die with my gloves on. That's attitude. When you enter in a godly attitude, even your pain you don't feel anymore. People, they are beating you up, but yet, bring it on. That's attitude. We need godly attitude. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I told you about the Zimbabwean runner in the Olympics in Mexico many years back. I think it was in 82. I don't remember the date. He's running, representing his country, and his short is at the knee level. His underwear is outside. He's holding his short with one hand, and he's still running. And people are screaming in the stadium. They were laughing of him, making fun of him. Look at, look at this, this underwear is outside. What is this guy doing? This guy didn't stop. I didn't come here to stop in the middle of the race. Yeah. Wolf short or no short, I have been sent here to run a race. Listen, God has sent you in the race in earth. And short or no short, you have to run the race and you have to finish the race. When you arrive at that place, you don't care about the opinion of mankind. You are not moved about the critics. You are so focused on your mission. Thank you, Lord. And last and last one, number three. Spiritual strength is necessary to increase your lot and your portion in life. Don't miss this one. If you want to increase your lot, somebody say more. Everybody say more. Say it again, more. Yes. If you want to get in the dimension of the more, you have to acquire spiritual strength. Put my verse on. Let's read this. In Joshua 17, more land for Ephraim and Manasseh. Then the children of Joseph spoke to Joshua, saying, Why have you given us only one lot and one share to inherit, since we are such a great people? Inasmuch as the Lord has blessed us until now. Now, here is a guy who is not happy with his portion. You catch me? Here is the people who feel like, this is too small for me. This, this lot in life is... What is that? Let's keep reading. Verse 15. So Joshua answered to them, If you are a great people, ah, Joshua is dangerous. He said, If you said you are strong and you say you are, okay, show me. Then go up to the forest country. Marakataya. <laughs> no wimp will go to the forest country. There's too much trouble there. And clear 
a place for yourself. There in the land of the parasite and the giant, since the mountain of Ephraim are too confined for you. Did you get this? These people come to Joseph and say, Joshi, something is not right here. You see how powerful we are? You give us only one box. You give us only one. This one only. Come on. Let's be real. Joshua said, you are strong? Okay. There is another place there. And, and he began to dictate them who's in that place. The parasite? And the giant? Since this place you're not... Let's go there. Verse 16. But the children of Joseph said, the mountain country is not enough for us. Ooh. Do you see the attitude? They feel like, Joshua, we heard you, but we need to go. Seriously, we are not trying to be greedy. All right? We are grateful. But the reality is our spirit is compelling us that this thing is not my portion in life. It's too small. Hayabusa. Am I speaking to somebody? Am I provoking somebody's spirit? Sometimes you got to get in a place where you feel like, uh-uh, this man, no me. It looked like me in the physical, but my spirit, mm-mm, this not this one. Is there anybody here who ever had a dream or somebody dream about you or you dream about somebody and they see you bigger, taller than you are in the natural? Anybody? It happened. Lift up your hand if it ever have happened to you. Drop your hand. That's your real you. God just gave you a revelation of your giantness. That, that the light you carry in the spirit. That's your real you. Okay, we'll talk about it another day. But that's your real you. Hallelujah. He said, my real me, not me, not me, not this one you know, uh, 5'11 guy. No, 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 not this one. My real me, that's a giant in the spirit, strong and mighty. If I feel like it doesn't make sense, I'm wrestling with him. Because my natural one, 5'11 said, this is good, you know, praise the Lord all the earth, hallelujah. But the one in me, my real me, if you like, no, 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 no. This is not my portion. <laughs> the mountain country is not enough for us, and all the Canaanites would dwell in the land, and the valleys have chariot and iron. Both those who are in Bethshane and towns, and those who are in the valley of Jezreel. Verse 17, watch this. And Joshua spoke to the house of Joseph, Again, again, eh? to Ephraim and Manasseh saying, you are a great people. No, he didn't say if you are great. He changed his mind because he realized the attitude of these kids, man. They are, they are not joking around. They, are, they, they, they don't play here. They, they mean business. He, said, he didn't say if you are great. No, this time he said, you are a great people. And what? And I what? Great power. You shall not have only one lot. This, this was my word. Prophet, this was my word. I cannot have only one lot in this life. What about you? What about you? Okay. Don't cheat you. Don't sell you cheap. Okay. I want you to be acquainted with your real you. Your you now may be okay with one lot, but your real you feel like, uh-uh, I am great in power, and I'm a great person. I cannot have only one lot. Thank you, Lord. Verse 18. But the mountain country shall be yours. Although it's wooded, you shall cut it down. And it's farthest extend shall be yours for you shall drive out. You know when you, only when you're strong they can talk to you like that. God can only give a commandment to one who's strong in the spirit drive them out. You will dry out the Canaanite though they have iron chariots and they are strong. In other words you need to be stronger than the strength of your opposition. Amen. Am I speaking to somebody? 
God is speaking to us. Cultivate strength through his word. Cultivate strength through worship. Cultivate strength through praise. Cultivate strength through prayer. That's what we need to do more. We've done it, and it brought us this far. But we need strength, more strength than we had had, so it can take us to where we want to go. If somebody has one lot and you know your spirit feel like there is more, stand up on your feet. If somebody feel like I need strength, stand up on your feet. Worship team, please come, and we're going to inquire, acquire strength today. I want you to see the size of the vision and the assignment. God has said before you, I want you to have a great evaluation of the conflicts that you are facing today. I want you to have a clear vision of the obstacles and the challenges that are standing before you, preventing you to move forward. Strength command results and strength command motion and advancements and acceleration. We are going to Zion standing before the Lord. And we will grow from strength to strength. That's why we come to church. That is Zion. So we can grow from strength to strength. I want you to close your eyes and lift up your hand to him and let me bless you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mande bosi kalabaya bundeyas. Legondo riko tabosa. Oh, let the rain of the Holy Spirit begin to rain upon us to refresh you. The journey has been long. The journey has been difficult. The sun has been scorching. The heat has been so strong and heavy. You have been pressed on every corner. Let the rain of God refresh. Yeah. Yeah. Let it distill in your spirit. Let it soak your emotions. Your mind. Let the rain of the Lord just wet you this morning. Let him strengthen your feeble knees. Let him strengthen your hands. We declare like David, train my hands for battle and my fingers, O oh Lord, for war. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is your strength. The Lord is your shield. He is your rampart and your refuge. Those who walk wait upon him. As we wait upon you, God. As your people wait upon you. Renew our strength. Renew the strength. Let them mount with wings like eagles. Let 
let them take off again from the ground where they have left before rise like eagles flap your wings like eagles malababos sakaya dan dele de bos eagle anointing open us tonight eagle anointing open us in this season that we may rise from where we have left that we may climb like eagles in higher heights you will run yeah you will run and not grow weary you will walk the walk of faith and not faint rise up 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 your spirit is rising up spirit rise up spirit rise up shake the dust of discouragement shake the dust shine let your light shine the glory of the lord is risen upon you i am your counselor i am your strength in time of need i am your inspiration i am the lift up of your head keep running keep running keep running kondo boss legendo ri intel braka you until fire batil el brendo si pekele marakite le bossi araba I will run and not get weary. I will walk and not faint. I will rise like the eagles. Arise church. Arise church. Arise. I am your sustainer. I am your sustainer. what you started I give you thanks father I give you thanks I give you thanks Thank you for hunger a greater hunger for your words a greater hunger for your presence a greater hunger for prayer 
a greater hunger for worship, a greater hunger for your values, oh God, a greater hunger for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I would like we give this hymn to the Lord that we've been singing together and it will be projected. Let us use it as a declaration as God is restoring your strength. It's like you just arrive at a gas station and he's restoring your strength. As you worship him, he's restoring your strength. Yeah. You will finish what you started. Be strong in the spirit and in the power of his might. Overcoming against conflicts, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are my champion. Yeah, he's your champion this morning. Giants fall when you. 